No! 
touch this whole world and Lord you more nobody can fill that void but Jesus whatever you need him to be he's more he's more than enough whatever you need from the Lord Jesus he's Yeah. 
at it, y'all. How you set my soul free, I won't forget it. Oh, yeah. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually, shall continually be in my mouth. I'll exalt the Lord because he is my keeper, my doctor. My lawyer, my king of glory, my Jehovah Tisca new, my lover, y'all, my lover, y'all, my all in all in all in all. Hey, I remember, Lord. I remember Jesus. Jesus. Hey, hey, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. Hey, hey, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. Hey, hey, Lord. Hey, hey, Lord. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. You saved my soul. Made me whole. Heal my mind. Heal my body. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. You deliver me. You set me free. Lord, you deliver me. You set me free. Heal my body. Told me to run on. Hey, hey, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. I can't. I can't forget how you died for me, Lord. How you made a way for me. I thank you, Lord. 
Well, somebody tell God, thank you. Amen. We bless the Lord. I, you may have your seats. Amen. You know my name. Woo. You know my name. Ah. You know my name. Come on, help me sing it. You know my name. You know my Woo. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Now, why would you take it away from me? Please take it away from me. Oh, how you walk with me. And oh, how you talk with me. Oh, how you tell me. And oh, how and oh, how you tell me you know my do you know he know your name? Hallelujah. Pick it up a little bit, you know. I don't know why you're dragging it. God been good to you. Yes, he has. And you know that he has to know your name, know your address, and the strands of hair on your head. We just want to thank him. Mama. We just want to thank him. Thank you, Jesus. Because if he know you, as many barbers in the world there is, he's no man. He know my voice. So when I cry out unto him and when I give him thanks and praise, he know that he know it's the right. He know he know this barber. Woo! You know my name. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. You know my name. Hmm. Ooh. 
Amen. I do honor my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen to everyone that's here today, Deacon Campbell and all the saints of the Most High God. Amen. It's another opportunity to be in the house of God just one more time. Just one more time. Grateful for another time for how good God has been. Amen. Glory to God. Not only has God been good, he is good. And, and for that, and just for that, that's enough to tell God thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's enough to tell God thank you. Amen. We bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. We bless the Lord. I want you to get your Bibles and turn with me to 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter. I'm going to read the first verse and not going to do a lot of reading, but just want to get you into where I'm where, where we're going I'm going to begin reading at the sixth verse and it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eliab and said surely the Lord's anointed is before him but the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Will you please bow your heads? Father, we are so thankful today for your goodness and for your mercies that you've allowed in our lives. And I ask that you would have your way in the service today as you move by your spirit. I take authority over the powers, even in the atmosphere of the enemy, that your word would have straight course, free course in this house. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to talk from the subject, live, living with an expectancy. Living with an expectancy. I tried, I tried to sort of put this in a, in a sense that it will make you, help you to understand even as this, the topic says. Samuel, the first chapter, the 16th verse, is talking about Samuel anointing David as king. And uh, as he goes to anoint David as king, well, he went to, to, to anoint the young man as king. We say David now because we know that's who it was. One of Jesse's children. When he got to Jesse's house, he asked Jesse, he told Jesse to bring his boys out because he knew that there was anointing going to be on one of his boys. And the first one he saw, he just said, I know this is him. By his appearance, I know this is him, so I'm going to anoint him. And, and the Lord said, no. The Lord said, no, uh, that's not the one that I've anointed, that I've called to be anointed. And for you not to look at an individual by what you can see about them, 
and some you know the parents can it can can sometimes be deceiving and, and so he says no this is not him he called all his brother his 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 um his sons out to anoint him and every one that he called out was not the one that God had called and Sa and Samuel knowing that God had spoke to him he says now listen is there another son somewhere because I know God sent me here to anoint your, one of your sons as king and he says yeah there's one more he said will you get him here and he, 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 he listen it's amazing how you can forget about your children because of certain anointings. He, they, listen, he, they, he, the, the prophet said, send them out, bring them out. One was left. The one that was overlooked is the one that God had charged to be king. And sometimes in life today, the one that's overlooked in the house of God is the one that God has anointed and is going to pull forth and going to pull out to anoint. David came in and let, let, me, let me tell you the commentary says this, that he had a cruise of oil to anoint them with. And every one of those brothers that he began to want to anoint, the oil would not pour. But when they brought Jesse's son David in, Samuel said, fetch him. We will not sit down till he come hither. And he sent, brought him in. Now he was a ruddy with all a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the spirit of the Lord came upon him, came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. The anointing was for David. But David did not immediately sit on the throne. That's why I want to talk to you about you got to live in expectancy. Even though God may have promised you something, it doesn't mean it's going to happen overnight. Amen. Let me tell you, I know what I'm talking about. Amen. It's not going to happen when you think it should happen and the way you think it's going to happen. Well, then what are you going to do? You have to live with the expectancy that it's going to happen. Amen. You have to take day by day by day by day and live in that expectancy I have found that sometimes when God has spoken into our lives that we live in the future not in the now we live expecting we live as though we are already there if David had lived as though he was already king he would have never went back tending his sheep David went right on back and tended those sheep and, and, so, and so therefore, David was living in an expectancy knowing that God had already anointed him king of Israel, but it just wasn't time yet. I don't know if he knew it won't time enough, but he went back to work. And, and so, and so what, what, we have to, uh, what we have to understand today is many of us are living in an expectancy and we're not living our lives, we're just existing. We are living today, like today is Sunday, but we're living and, and we're, we're here in the house of God and we work where we work and do what we do. We're living that, we're, we're not living that life. We're living in what we is supposed is going to happen. We're living as what we think is going to happen. We're living as what the Lord has already said he's going to do. Well, uh, now you're not living. That means that that today's problems, today's blessings, you're not honoring God as of today because you're too involved in after a while. And we don't understand that the after a while is going to come, but you got to leave the after a while alone and let God deal with the after a while and you live today the best that you can live. 
You do what you can do today. Don't worry about the after a while, not tomorrow. Because we don't know what God's going to do, how God's going to handle it. But if God spoke into your life, it's going to take place. We're not going to try to push God into a, a yesterday for today. We're going to thank God for today. It's a blessing to be in the house of God today. It's a blessing to be alive today. I know what God has already spoken into my spirit and into my life, but I got to thank God for today. I'm going to enjoy today. Live your life in the now, not in what's to come. That doesn't mean you don't have faith in God. You have to have faith in God is to understand that you are to do what you can do today. Live the best life you can live today. Enjoy what God has blessed you today. Because you know everything's gonna take it's gonna be okay after a while in the future. Even if it's a it's a, a year away, you know God's gonna take care of that. But except you understand what you've got to do right now, you got to live, live your fullness of life right now. You got to praise God right now. You got to thank God right now. You got to enjoy what you have right now. That's why many people in the house of God are so broken and so torn and so bruised and, and not happy. Simply, simply because the enemy have not allowed them to understand what's going on in their lives. And what they, what they don't understand is that God is with them now. God got to bring you. And sometimes God, you know, sometimes the Lord don't tell us stuff because we can't handle it. You know, sometimes we just can't handle what God has promised us. So the Lord said, I'm not going to tell you. And we be praying, God, will you just let me know? Will you just tell me? He's saying, Lord, I would, and the Lord, listen, listen, David was not that kind of an individual. He knew he was to be king. He knew he was to be anointed, but yet and still he kept on doing what he was doing day by day. That's just like if some, listen, if, 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 if someone, if, mm, yeah. if I was promised a Benz, Bentley, a Bentley, Bentley, got that to be on the thing. <laughs> and I'm not driving a Bentley. I'm not going to act like I'm driving a Bentley. I'm not going to wait till I drive a Bentley to be enjoying be, be enjoying riding. I'm going to enjoy what I got right now. I know the Bentley will come, but I'm going to keep that one clean. I'm going to shine that one up. I'm going to take it to the car wash. I'm going to live with, 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 with what I have now because I know the Bentley is the only way. If you, if you don't thank God for what you got, you're going to mess around and not get what he promised you. You ought to enjoy your life today. Thank God for what you have today. Go on, listen, go in on the inside of that car. Keep that car clean. If it needs fixing, fix it. You don't wait to the promise. Because what you have now and how you act now is going to take you into the promise. If David had a quit after he was anointed, he never would have made king. But God knew he, who he had picked and what he was going to do. David went through much. He even became a person on, the, on Saul, the king's staff. When he knew that God had anointed him to take Saul's place. And when the spirit of the enemy would come against Saul, they called him. That's how he got on staff. See, I know this young man that can play a harp real good. And so therefore, he's the one we can bring in to deliver you, to help you, to get you through whenever the enemy attacks you. And that's how David got on the staff of Saul. 
And so you have to understand that until God moves you, stop trying to move yourself. Until God raises you up, stop trying to raise yourself up. Just enjoy, enjoy where you are today. Thank God for today. Thank God for how he has already blessed you. Thank God for what you already got. Thank God for your life, health, and your strength. Thank God that the devil didn't do what he wanted to do. You ought to go ahead and thank God in spite of. You got to live your life now. Because it's a process. It's a process. We just don't believe the process. You got to trust it. If you don't trust the process, you're not trusting God. Your life goes in a process. David had to process out. David was consecrated. David looked at Saul as he was his king. He never degraded Saul. He always respected him. Even to the point that when Saul wanted him dead, and he was on the run he still respected him he lived life with an expectancy and, and the enemy always come to you to try and get your mind wrong in the wrong attitude that you can't prosper as to where God has promised you that you can't live I mean live in your life Many believers don't enjoy life. They just push around, holding on to this, that, and the other, but not really just enjoy, taking a day at a time and just thanking God. You need to walk. You need you, you need to take. You need to walk in, in in today, as though if the day is over, it's over with. Then it's all right because I'm gonna walk today. I'm gonna be happy. I'm gonna be. I'm I'm gonna be thankful. Thank God that I'm saved. Thank God that the Lord is on my side. Thank God the Lord is with me. Thank God for his presence. Knowing that God has promised you to sit at the king's table or to be the king, but yet and still you can't focus in on being, being the king as, as, as Saul did not, as David did not. He focused in on the point that the Lord was with him. And he took it day by day by day. He went back tending his sheep. Whenever he, his dad sent him to check on his brothers, he came out. He, he had to face a giant with an attitude. Now, it's bad enough to face a giant. But to face one with an attitude is another problem. And sometimes the problems and things we go through, they have attitudes. And then we get an attitude. Well, why you got an attitude? Because you know God is with you. He's going to take care of you. He wants you to live abundantly. He wants you to listen. He wants you to stay, keep the faith. Keep on trusting him. Don't let go. Don't turn loose. Keep on believing the word of God. Thank God for another day. We, we live. Many of us don't live. We're living, we're living, we're existing until that door opens. What door? The door God promised me. What you gonna do until the door opens? I'm gonna sit down and wait on it. You're not gonna live? It's gonna sit and wait on it? That's not what he said. We have to have, live an abundant life. What God promised you will come. It took, listen, David ran from Saul. He went through much. And 15 years after God spoke. Now let me tell y'all something. Now you can't rush God like we say we can. We can, we can rush God. Well, I, don't think you, I, don't, I mean, you know, rushing God is like, <clears throat> rushing your children and when they in 2021 
you you got little children in 2021, 20, you know you know they just not what like they was in 1986. <laughs> okay, let me get out of that part. And, but from the time that David was anointed, nearly 15 years later, is before he sat on the throne. We are that microwave age. We want God to do it now. Quick, in a hurry. Do it now. Quick and in a hurry. What you want God to do? Because you ain't doing nothing quick and in a hurry. But you want God to move quick and in a hurry. Do it now, Lord. There has to be a process. You don't ever go into the kitchen to make a cake and just get, well, mine is box, of course. Put a box and the eggs and, and, some, and all that together and, and throw it in the microwave. And out jumps a cake. It takes time for that cake to be mixed up and then cooked. I'm not saying that God can't come quickly and suddenly. There are some suddenlies that happen in our lives. But everything that we go through is not going to be a suddenly. David's moving to the throne was not a suddenly. It doesn't mean that God had took the throne from him. Not at all. It doesn't mean that God's not going to do what he said he was going to do in your life. Not at all. But you, you, you have to understand that, that there's a process. David went through a process, but he had to live with an expectancy. Now, whatever is going on in your life, whatever the Lord has promised you, he did not lie. Whatever God has showed you, he did not lie. It's going to take a process to get you there. So therefore, during the process, don't you give up. And don't you act like life is nothing. That, that's just, I'm going to get better when, it's, when I get over young. Honey, go ahead and get better today. Tell the devil he is a liar. That no more will you buy me on a Monday, Sunday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. I'm going to be grateful unto the Lord for where I am. I'm going to thank God for what I already have. I'm going to thank God for my house. I'm going to thank God for my car. I'm going to thank God for my clothes. I'm going to thank God for my family. I'm going to thank God for life. I'm going to thank God for help. And I'm going to thank God for my strength. You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to thank God. Woo! I'm just going to give God some praise. And after a while, the more you praise God, the more you thank God, then after a while, you're going to see you feathering into what God has promised you. Woo! Fifteen years is a long time, but it's a short time. You see, because what God can do in 15 years can blow your mind. Even though 15 years have gone by, what God did for David blowed David's mind. So, 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 yeah, it blowed his mind. He messed up too, but he blowed his mind. <laughs> what God can do, listen, you, you can take a. Yeah. Y'all got me covered right in prayer. You can take a marriage that's been messed up for 25 years and let, it, and, and let God handle it for three. And you'll be more happy in them three years than you ever were in 25. Am I preaching? Because y'all think I'm talking about child, I'm talking about child, I'm telling you. You can take a marriage that's been gone wrong for 25 years and give it to God and in three years you, you'll be better off in them three years than you were in them 26 years. That's how God works. So what you're going to do in those 25 years, you still trust in God and you believe in God. You know that what God's word has said is true. So you do what you do and you thank God for every day that comes. And you're not going to get depressed. When you get depressed, you, you slow down the pro process. Why do you suppose the enemy comes with so much depression and oppression against you? He comes to slow down the process. 
God, God, listen, there's many things that God would have done for us he did not do because we slowed down the process. We became bitter. We became angry. Filled with unbelief. We stopped praising God. And some of us just stopped going to church. We stopped reading our Bible. We stopped praying. And all you did was slow down the process. And you thought you bad. Nah, you're not bad. You just in the way. Because whenever you stressed out, when you got oppression upon you, you can't thank God like you would thank him. The Bible says you ought to praise him in season and out of season. When you feel like it and when you don't feel like it. Praise him in the house. Thank him in the house. And it's time for us to take, pick back up these old sayings that we was taught years and years ago and, and, and use it with an integrity against the enemy. Plead the blood of Jesus. We act like the blood don't mean nothing today, but the blood has never lost its power. Woo! I said the blood never lost its power. Plead the blood of Jesus. When the enemy comes up against you, please the blood, the blood, the blood. When he comes against your mind, the blood, the blood, the blood. Woo! Glory be to God. When he's trying to interject in your mind that God's not going to do what God said he was going to do, you sit down carefully and tell him, I, listen, I plead the blood of Jesus against you now. Satan, you're a liar. The blood, the blood of Jesus. And maybe your body is so wrecked in pain and you can't do, you can't even get up to get you a praise as you would, but you just say the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is against you right now, Satan. I plead the blood of Jesus. And so therefore, the devil got to understand that you ain't taking no for an answer. And you yet, yet believe God. And you're not going to allow the enemy to come and deter you. From what God has promised you in his word and when God has spoken into your heart he's not he, the, the Lord never will, he's not a man that he should lie neither the son man that should, he should repent but we're living an unhappy life, we're living we're living, we're just living not in abundance you know you say well I want this house and, and I can't get this house and I'm on Wait till I get this house. What you gonna wait for to get the house that you ain't taking care of where you at? You are hindering the process. Woo! I, I, tell, tell your neighbor if you, if, you, if you can tell them you're hindering the process. Don't do that. There's gonna be a process that you gotta go through. David, Saul did everything he could to destroy David. I'm telling you. He did everything he could to stop him. To kill him. The one he was supposed to have married after he killed Goliath, he wouldn't let him marry her. Gave her to another. And he said, now take this one because she'll be a snare unto him. She'll be a snare unto him. He did everything he could to stop him. And the devil is doing everything he can to stop you. But you got to understand there's a process. And whatever the devil is doing that God is allowing him to do, you're going to come through. If you keep on trusting God. If you keep on trusting and believing in him. And, and, and for heaven's sakes, don't stop your praise. Hallelujah. Don't stop praising him. Many of us cannot even enjoy everyday life. We are so consumed with the expectancy of what God's word is saying and what we are supposed to do, of what we're going to have. It's consumed us into the fact. Let, 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 let me tell you something. 
I remember God had promised me something I didn't even ask him for. He just promised it to me. I don't reckon I asked him for it. I, I didn't ask him for it. He, and he spoke into my spirit and said, so and so and so and so and so and so. And I said, oh God. Blow my mind. And I was like, okay. So, so what I did, I started making way, you know, for what he had promised me. And I noticed that I was, I would be depressed, sort of, kind of, yeah, that's the word, depressed. I tell y'all it was sort of, kind of. I would just be sad because I'm looking like, Lord, there's, there's nothing happening to what you said. There's nothing taking place. You told me that this is what would be, but nothing is happening, nothing is going in that direction. And I lived the life of trying to live in that life instead of living the life that I had. And one day I prayed, I really prayed, I really prayed because I was tired and I, was, I knew it had to be on me. And I was praying to God and I prayed and I was praying, Lord, so-and-so, you promised this and you promised this and the other, this and the other, and there's nothing is coming and I just can't hardly take it. And I'm just sad, I just don't understand it. Did you, you talked to me, Lord, you told me this. He let me go ahead and have my little pity about it. Then he says to me, I haven't done what I promised you because you haven't done what you promised me. And I'm like, how is that to be? He said, because before you go to the Hama, whoo, before you go to that place, there are some things you got to do. And I was like, what the world I got to do? I've got, to, I've got it going on now. What do I have to do? He said, there, there are things in you. See, I'm telling y'all my stuff, and y'all don't tell me your stuff, but <laughs> then you want to talk about my stuff. But I'm going to tell you that because, hey, Baba Sa. Woo, da sa, da 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 sa. Woo, ba da da ya sa. He says to me, he says, because you stopped the process, you have slowed me up because you have not done there's things within you that you need to do like forgiving. Anybody else know that sometimes you can, you can think about some things and you know that the other person owes you an apology and you don't owe them and you hold things against them? And you want to know from God why they ain't apologize to you? Y'all better come on here. And the Lord told me, he says, that's not your business. That's my business. He said, your business is to let it go and forgive it. He says, and what you, what you have allowed to happen is what I said I was going to do, I'm going to do. But you have slowed my process up. Because you are not in the place to go where I told you to go. Nor do what I told you to do. And I'm like, that's a sad situation. I thought, when I got up off the floor from praying <laughs> and from crying and from telling God I'm so sorry, God to mighty no. When I got up off the floor, I felt about that big. I thought, God, I can't believe that I allow myself to degrade your presence and degrade your promise because of me. He lightly, nicely said it was you. Barbara, it he said, no, you blaming me. He said, but it was you. He says, and when you can let go and you can love the way I say love, not the way you think you should love, but the way I love, you. He said, I can't move you to another notch. I promise you, the promise is there. And the promise has still got held up. It's there. I will not reveal to you anymore of what I promise you. I can reveal to you more and more and more, but I will not reveal it because of what's happening on the inside of you. And if you don't turn it loose, let it go. 
and live today. It's like, Lord, I can forgive him, you know, but just let me go over there. Just let me get over there. And I, you know, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> he said, no. He said, no. You're going to do it now. Or you'll never see that. And I'm like, say what? Say, sanctify. Love the Lord. Preach to every Sunday. <laughs> And by the time the Lord stripped me down on that floor, I got up on that floor and I was like, Lord, if you just take care of me and love me, don't ever let me stand in your way again. So you say, well, why you tell me this story? Because some of y'all are standing in God's way. I just told you part of my story. You ain't saying nothing about yours, but so, I'm, I'm not preaching this. I didn't go through that for just myself. I'm, not, I'm, tell, I'm here to tell you the reason that God can't do what he said he would do is because you are in God's way you are not doing as God said that you, you should do you're not living as God said you should live you're not loving as God said you should love so you know what I said if there is no future the way he has promised I'll be okay I'll be okay because today I'm gonna fill it with so much joy and I'm gonna fill it with so much obedience and so much love I'm gonna live today watch this watch this I'm gonna live today if tomorrow never comes I'm gonna be happy I'm gonna be thankful that I'm saved that the Lord loves me and every opportunity I should I should get I'm gonna give him thanks and praise I'm gonna honor him so some years that went by, yeah. It ain't 15 years, but some years have gone by. And I'm still like, Lord, I ain't gonna worry about it. I'm not gonna worry you about it. I'm not even gonna pray about it because I know it's already done. It's already fixed. And when you get ready, I moved. Jesus. Somebody tell God thank you. So I'm saying, what am I saying? I'm saying that when God gets ready, if you're in place, then you'll get into the place that God promised you. But until that, you'll just be existing. And when the enemy come out against you, you will fight him. You want to give it to God. Everything that David went through before he hit that throne, he gave it to God. He had the opportunity to slay Saul. I tell you what, if I had that same mind when I was before I got that flow, I would have slayed him, died, killed, and I just killed him. And I would have said, God gave me the victory. Amen. He had the opportunity to slay Saul, but he honored him. He said, I will not touch God's anointed. Even though God's anointed was trying to kill him. But he knew, listen, he was the man for the right, he, he was the right man for the season, the king. Because anybody else would have killed him. Would have took Saul right on down. Wouldn't have cut no little stuff off his little, no, nah, would have took him down. And see, see what's happened to many of you, you taking, you taking people down. You don't recognize the anointing, you don't recognize God. You don't, you don't fear him. You're just doing what you want to do. You're doing your thing. And it's stopping the process that God has for you to take you to the place that God want to take you to. <sighs> Jesus, let him fix it for you. Because he knows just what just what to do. Let me tell you something. It's a lonely place when you're waiting on God. And to keep it not being lonely, you have to keep God with you. You have to stay in that place that God has for you. If David had not stayed in the right frame of mind, 
it would have destroyed the call on his life. Just as God took Saul down, David would have never got up doing all the tests and the trials that he went through. But he stood on the promise and the word of God. If David had killed Saul, he never could have been king. He never could have been king. And what you don't understand is sometimes your mouth, words are spirit. You need to watch what you say. Sometimes what you have said have stopped the process that God has for you. And you living, trying to live in the, in the future while you're living today and you're today is taking you under. Thank God for every day. Lord have mercy. I wish I could tell you a little bit clearer, cleaner, a little bit straighter, but I can't go much straighter than I am because I ain't going to let y'all live within some of my business because y'all be, you know. <laughs> I ain't told you too much as it is. But I'm here to tell you, living today in an expectancy I don't expect to stay here always. But I'm going to thank God for that, but I thank God mostly for right here. I got to make sure that things are well here for me to get to where God wants me to go. <laughs> I got to make sure I love right now to love myself up there. I got to make sure I treat people right here to, treat, to get to where God is trying to take me to. To treat people right. I got to make sure I live right now. And I got to enjoy what I live. Before I can get. To a higher place. The expectancy. It's killing some of us. It's like a person trying to retire. A person is ready to retire. You and but you're working. You're not retired yet. Why are you gonna go on the job and act like you retired? You 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 got you got two more years. Well, a year and, and five months. Go on the job and act like you already retired. And see how, how fast you will retire. <laughs> and if you go on the job and act like you have been retired, you may lose benefits of when you would retire. Uh, the Holy Ghost is so real. Because I wanted to make sure you understood the real plan he gave me that. So if you, if you have almost time for retirement, you got to keep working. You go in that job, on that job, do, 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 do what you got to do, have it, do, 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 be happy. Because retirement is coming. But you're not in retirement yet. So you can't go in the job and I'm telling this old job. You got 15 minute break, now you take an hour break. Cause you almost at retirement. Like the cameras ain't on you. You, 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 you you're living in an expectancy that you may not ever get. Because you're not living as you should today. You say, well, what, what should it matter if I don't give my, my employee my, my, my best? I mean, dog, I've been here for 27 years. What, what, what about it? What about it? The, the, the Bible says give, give, give an employee the best. What, whatever you deserve, to, they are expecting from you, give it to them. Uh-oh. I got to stop. 
but uh, you got to live today. Live today. And when retirement time comes, you go out with a clean slate. With a clean slate. Stop trying to live in retirement and you're not retired yet. Stop trying to live a life that's not your life. When the enemy comes out against you as a flood, the Spirit of God will mount himself up and push back darkness off you. You tell the flood, no, -uh, don't, don't come no further. Because that's my child. Jesus. Think about your life. Think about yourself. And where you are, what you're involved in, and your life is, and see how you're living your life. If you're not living your life today, but trying to live for what you expect tomorrow, if you're not living it today to the fullness, then you are walking and messing up God's process. He can't process you out. When he can't process you out, you stay where you are. And you know what you do when you stay where you are? Murmur and complain. Don't like nobody. Don't even like yourself. Because you're that miserable. Say to yourself, say self. No longer would I allow the enemy to use me to keep me from being processed by God. Now, you really didn't have to say that now, but you said it. And you have to hold on to that. Hold on to it, to God's glory. Come on and give God some praise, if you will. There's an older song that says, I moved from my old house to my new house. God wants us to move from our old selves to a new place in him. It's up to us. David could have given up, saints. He could have messed up. But God, <laughs> but God, Woo. somebody come on and tell God, thank you. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hold on to what God has promised you. David held on to it. You hold on to it. Maybe he didn't speak to your spirit. Maybe it's just in the word of God. You hold on to it. 
and watch God bring it to pass. Whew. Glory. Will you stand? I just want you to lift your hands and give the Lord some praise in this place. Just thank him for where you are. Go ahead and thank him. For, just thank him for where you are. Just thank God for where you are. Just thank God for who he is. Thank God for what he's already done. What he's about to do. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Father, I thank you. Everyone in this house today. And for those individuals that are here. And the expectancy of you moving in their lives have just not come to pass. Keep them encouraged. Encourage their hearts. And keep their minds covered. That the enemy cannot come in and wreck their minds. But today, let your anointing Destroy every yoke that's coming out against them. Satan, you are a liar. The blood of Jesus Christ is against you. And against every unclean spirit that has come against your people. I decree today that deliverance, deliverance, shall come and that in their bellies shall flow rivers of water gushing out into a joy that's unspeakable even now Jesus let the anointing of God flow in this house and cover these individuals especially those God that are going through Jesus tear down the stronghold tear it down Tear down the stronghold that's come against their lives. In the name of Jesus, and I decree it now. Let your blood cleanse, deliver, make whole, and set free to the glory of God. The strength that's in your power of your words. Let them speak deliverance out of their mouths as never before. To God be glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.